Hi guys and welcome back. Today I am working on a larger watercolor painting and I haven't for a really long time so I am feeling really good to get back into this. I I love being able to work on something larger like this so that I have more space to do more more details and a little bit more of a complex way of rendering it. It just it feels good to get back to something that I do really love and I was missing so that feels very exciting. But today I uh, I just want to chat, chat about making art anyways, but also specifically about getting back to something that you love. So I, I definitely have periods of time where I love painting less and periods of time where I love it more. I'm always doing it to some degree, but I have just been feeling so much more connected and motivated with my painting practice. And that has been really exciting and uplifting and it makes me just want to do it more and more and and yeah it's uh it's very hopeful to me that I feel like I'm I'm positioning positioning myself on the right path to to enjoying art again in a more full way honestly I kind of feel like how I think I felt at least when I was younger when I was just voraciously wanting to consume art and make art and paint and and it just it feels like I'm getting back to that that passion again and it and it feels really good so I definitely don't have like the answer this is the way for you to find what you love when it comes to art this is the way to get back to it I I just know what has worked for me at least I think it has, but I can just talk a bit about some of the things that I've been focusing on over the last couple of months that I think has really helped reignite this, this passion, this excitement, and maybe it'll give you some ideas on things to think about or focus on, or just some hope even for the future. If you're feeling like you're in a rut and you're not loving what you used to love in the same way, I, yeah, again, I've been through a lot of ups and downs as far as how I have felt about making art. And I think that first just recognizing that that's healthy and that's normal and it's okay was a kind of a game changer for me, honestly. I, I used to feel that when I was not feeling as like in love with painting that there was something wrong and it meant that if I didn't fix it and fix myself, that I would be going on this path of an artless life, <laughs> that eventually I would get to a point where there was just no more painting and I didn't love it and I felt soulless. I felt like I was missing one of the most important things in my life. And that is a very stressful thing to tell yourself when you're already not feeling it. <laughs> it did not help me feel more more passionate, more excited about painting, it certainly felt more demotivating because it was putting all of this fear and stress and weight on making more art on me. And uh, I don't know, just the more that I've been thinking about it and thinking about how it connects with other things in life, the more I think I've come to the realization that, that there really is a a cycle to everything in life. And that's not a bad thing. It's okay to have a day that you're just not feeling super happy and excited and content. Some days you just feel a little off and a little grumpy or a little tired. And that's not, that's not inherently bad. And I, I think that once I've, and I can't say this, like I'm, I've arrived and this will never be a problem again, but once I've opened myself up to considering it that way, seeing that that slower, lower, more tired, less, less motivated, less passionate, less creative days that sometimes those are days that I do need, that maybe I need to be able to recuperate and recharge my battery. Maybe I just need to think about what I am dealing with at the time and just giving myself space helps. Anyways, I'm going a bit on a tangent. The point is, is that that just recognizing that sometimes when I'm not feeling as artsy, as creative, whatever you want to call it, that that's okay. It's not, it's not a, 
a death toll for my art. It's just a phase. It's a time in my life. And I know that that's, that can feel minimizing if you're going through a very extended period of time where you're, you're struggling with this. And I need, I 100% understand that I have gone through very long periods of time where I just was not feeling any connection to the to the work that I was creating or painting at all. I was still painting, I was still making art, but I wasn't feeling anything for it. So I do understand that, <laughs> that it can feel like it goes on forever and maybe it will never end. And it's just, there's a lot of give and take in life and being able to recognize the bad is not necessarily bad, but just a cycle. It It's taken a lot of pressure off of myself, off of me, trying to force every day to be to the same level of creativity, to that same high tier of uh, motivation and productivity. It just, it's, it's, it's made it a lot easier to enjoy the days that are really creative for me. I've also been thinking a lot about what were the things that I, I always wished that I could get out of with my art when I was younger. And that's helped me to remember what are the things that I actually care about that I know that gives me a spark and an interest. And some of these things I haven't thought about in years and other things have always been in the back of my mind, but I've been afraid of attempting it because they're really big and, and I'm ready to tackle some of those things. So I don't think I'm gonna get too overly specific because a lot of this stuff is still just very nebulous. It's still kind of just me starting to come to terms with things that I, I want to have at least tried in my life. And some of those things are things like, I, I really am very passionate about wanting to tell a story. I want to create a graphic novel. I've very lightly dipped my toes into this kind of idea. Very, very lightly, I should say this. On a few different occasions since, well, for a long time, and I've never really fully committed. I always tell myself I won't be able to tell a good story because I'm not a writer, I'm an artist. And that's true. It's a practice. It's a thing that I have to practice, I should say. So that's that's a skill that I don't have yet, but I can learn it. But But anyways, the point is, I've been thinking about that, that I have always had an interest in telling story through art. And even if I'm not working on a graphic novel, that that can come out in my work. If I'm trying to conceptualize a world that I wish that I could be in or that I could experience or experience with you guys or details that would be in a story that I wish that I could show you or characters or emotions. There's just so many little fine details that go into a story that could be in a painting. And I've been thinking a lot about that. If I was to make a painting while I was working on a graphic novel, would I want to connect those? Would I want to paint one of my characters or paint an emotion that I wanted to figure out how to portray. And that's just making me think of so many new options that I could use in my work. And it's just, it feels like, like I've just opened up a bunch of doors all at once of new, new sources to find inspiration, new things to really focus and pay attention to when it comes to making art. And that helps me so much from feeling like I'm just regurgitating the same thing over and over in painting after painting. It feels like there's all of these new worlds opened up that I can really explore and delve into. And really the root of that is just that I was coming back to what were the things that I've always been interested in and haven't fully realized that I've, for whatever reason, I've always held myself back from exploring fully. Oh, and really quickly, this painting is the exclusive print for October for Patreon. So if you want to get a print of her, the only way to do that is to go sign up basically right now because I'm really behind. So October 31st is the last day to sign up for this print. So make sure to run right over there. There's a link in the description that will take you over there and you just have to sign up for the print tier for by the end of October 31st. And uh, then I'll send it to you. 
and I'm very excited to send them out because I'm very happy with how this one turned out. Uh, but if you'd rather have the original painting, she is also available at my shop. So there is a link in the description that'll take you over to the listing for the original painting as well. And of course, I want to give a really quick thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. And because I've been thinking more story related, it it means that I've been thinking more about what are the characters that I want to put into my paintings, even if they're just one-offs and they're just in that single painting. It just feels like there's just so much more to bite into to, to really obsess over as I'm working on the painting. I can try to think about the character and get to know them and think about what they might be going through or what makes them interesting and many of those things aren't going to end up in a painting, but it does give me something to just really sink my teeth into when it comes to thinking about paintings and future paintings and projects that I can work on. So there's just, uh, yeah, a lot of things in my head that I'm just really excited about exploring in a visual art form. And that feels really good to have a bunch of backlog that I have more ideas than time to paint and I can't wait to get to some of those. Well, let's chat a little bit about the execution of this painting, what I'm actually working on today. So the background, loved working on it. It was so much fun. I've been really, really s just settling into the pleasure of letting watercolors behave like watercolors. So I was actually really surprised with, <laughs> with the way that the watercolors actually behaved with this. So I mixed a couple paints together into a wash and I like to use little plastic cups. Well, any type of cups I have, whatever, it doesn't matter. I have little glass ones that I've thrifted and I love them, but this one was plastic, but I mixed up my base watercolor wash. And I like to do this for large areas where I'll have a, a cup that I can mix that main paint into. And then I have a few little puddles of more concentrated different colors that I can drop into the wet on wet mixture. And I find that that kind of system works really well for me. So I had that, that cup and I had mixed, uh, I think it was quinacridone gold and, um, oh, I don't remember. It's a green color from Daniel Smith, a really granulating one under sea green. That's it. Um, and maybe one more color. Anyways, I mixed them up together and I did some samples and it was this really nice olive green color and I loved it. And as I used it on the actual painting, I found that the quinacridone gold really rose to the top. So I think what was really happening was that the pigments and the undersea green was probably denser or heavier and they sunk to the bottom. And I, I mix up my, my cup of paint all the time. Like every time I dip in, I'll usually mix it up. So I was mixing it up, but even on the paper itself, I found that, that if it was getting dropped into a particularly wet area, the yellow would rise to the top and the other pigments would sink and then actually shift away. So I had areas that were just really yellow and it was not bad. I actually found it really interesting to observe how how much of a mind of its own this watercolor had. People like to say that, but it's it can be really true. I was just, that was really interesting to learn a little bit more about these pigments and to see that, that what I was observing in my little sample was not actually one-to-one -one happening in my larger painting. And it was interesting. It was cool. I liked it. I did end up doing another wash on top of it because that first initial wash was just very, very textural and it had a lot of uh, variations in values. So some areas were really light and some areas were a lot darker and I didn't want the background to have quite that level of visual chaos. So I did another layer of a wash to help unify it. And then I did another layer on top of that, that I added the uh, darker cloudiness vignetting effect on the, edges of the painting to just help close it in on the character. And uh, the face, I loved working on the face. I, I have struggled since the beginning of ever with painting faces that are even slightly tilted back. It's the nose really, it's, it's the nostrils and I just, I don't, 
I don't fully understand the nose <laughs> as well as I would like. So I want to practice that because it doesn't really take much of a backward lean before you you can see more of the nostril. And it's just like, there's just so many angles of the face that begin to show more of the nose and a weird angle and whatever. I, I want to be able to paint that better and understand that better. So it's time for me to not be afraid and to really tackle it. And I have been using better reference to make sure that I can see what I'm trying to draw to see the face. So this painting was uh, referenced from from references that I, I bought from Howard Lyon. So if you were looking for some quality references, I highly suggest searching his name. He, he creates very, again, high quality uh, print packs that are often around a theme and they're very well lit and they often have like um, character costumes. I, I love them. That helped a lot. It really helped a lot to have better reference. In the future, I really do want to deviate more from the reference. I, I want to create more of a mashup between several different references and make sure that it separates more from it. So this one, it does look a little more like the reference than I would like overall, but, but I'm really happy with the painting and how it did come out. So that's just a note for me for the future is that I do want to be able to distinguish it a little bit more, but, but yeah, if you are really struggling with something, I suggest you find some good reference. Oftentimes, and I have, I have known this because this has happened to me many times where I've really struggled with a very specific thing. And then once I found clearer reference and multiple references that were a higher resolution or just higher quality, I've been able to actually see what the issue was and fix it and work better at it. So, so anyways, that's one of my many focuses is understanding the nose better so I can draw better and paint it better. I was very surprised with the colors that this piece ended up because it was very, very different from what I initially imagined when I was conceptualizing this painting. I originally planned on it being very autumn leaf colors. So very warm, warm reds and oranges and yellows, of course. Uh, but I found that that's one of the biggest disconnects between the pieces that I create and the pieces that I love that uh, other people do, or the few that I love compared to the main body of my work is that for, for some reason, I tend to choose colors that feel right in the moment, but then the completed piece just isn't quite satisfying what I want out of my colors. I've, I've, I've definitely noticed that that is one of the big issues that I've had, especially looking at the larger body of work that I have. When I look at them all together, it just doesn't quite have that that feeling and mood that I want. And I've been trying to figure out why it is. Why is it that when I'm working on a painting, I choose colors that after the fact, uh, I'm not as hot on. Why am I doing that? So I know that one of the pitfalls that I tend to fall into is that I like to do themes, things, wow, things very themey. So <laughs> this piece, I originally planned on it being a fall, autumn, end of season kind of painting. So of course you would go with very warm color palette. But the thing is, is that I just, I don't personally like that kind of color palette. So I would, I would normally often find a way to come up with a palette that I don't really love, but it definitely fits the theme. And I don't really realize that I don't love it until I finish it. And then I'm looking at the painting and it's all oranges and reds and I'm just not really that hot into it. So I'm trying to deviate that a little bit, separate that out. I, I want to make sure that when I'm planning a piece, the colors need to really just come together with the kind of mood that I want to create for my pieces and not just for the theme of that piece in that moment because I I won't be happy with it in the long term. So so anyways, luckily I caught myself before I 
I started painting this. I had a color comp that was all yellows and oranges and reds and I saved it because I do them digitally and I was about to start painting. I'm like, wait, do I actually like this? And I did not. So I went back to the drawing board and I came up with this one, which I'm much happier with. I, I think it still has like that air and atmosphere of fall time without it being quite so on theme, so specific. And it's, it's colors that I love. So I'm much happier with this one. And I think just the more that I can catch myself before I commit to colors that aren't what I like, the more I can actually remember to pay attention to that and be a little bit more self-reflective on what I actually like. And a quick reminder, this is the exclusive print for the print tier on Patreon this month, which means you only have until the very end of October 31st to sign up if you want to get the print of her. So make sure to check the link out that's down in the description if you want to go sign up. And the original painting is at my shop. So the, again, that link is also down below so you can go, go and look at my painting. <laughs> uh, but that is it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me. And I will see you guys next time. And uh, thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day and some magical art painting time.